This is a Japanese Circle laptop. Also, it runs Debian, and this video is going to be a short review, rebuild, and some tips on setting up GNU Plus Linux. So, first let's start with an attempt at a short review. Well, I wanted something a bit newer that would run a USB-C dock and my weird dual monitor thingy, but also has a decent keyboard and a reasonable amount of ports. So I ended up with this odd hardware. I'm not too familiar with the Japanese laptop market, but they do make some interesting products. This is a Panasonic Let's Note CF SV9, not to be confused with the Panasonic CF S9. The SV9 mostly resembles a thinner tough book with its magnesium body, but I imagine in durability it is more similar to the X200 ThinkPad. It has a non chiclet keyboard, which is pretty decent, aside from the lack of track point. The Japanese layout is close enough, but the enter key placement does throw off a little bit of the layout of the keyboard. But another thing to note is FN and Control are switchable in the BIOS. It also has a nice 1610 aspect ratio with a 1920 by 1200 resolution, most likely an IPS panel. And the laptop is also oddly lightweight, only weighing about 2 pounds or 1 kilogram. Some of that might be caused by the lack of an optical drive. Instead, there's a large gap which is covered up, which would unfortunately prevent an otherwise easy upgrade. The battery is easily removable, and the one on this unit has 90% of the original capacity, but I was only able to get about 5 hours of battery life on the Debian installation. In terms of the touchpad, the touchpad wheel is pretty good for scrolling, and it is small enough that it doesn't get in the way while typing. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a middle mouse button, but it has some extra keys due to the Japanese layout. The biggest downside of the system, though, is that it has soldered RAM. But on a more positive note, the I.O. is great for a newish laptop with VGA, Ethernet, HDMI, and USB-A. It also charges with either USB-C or a 16-volt barrel jack, so it works well with USB-C docks. Overall, I like the computer. So, now that the review is over, the first thing I did when I got the laptop after powering it on and disassembling it was I wanted to replace the 256GB M.2 drive and replace the CPU. I wasn't able to find a service manual, but luckily there is a disassembly video by a Japanese YouTuber that shows how to open up the back side of the laptop. It is just a single panel, and most of the screws are the same size, with some slightly longer ones near the battery. The back is also covered by an adhesive tab, and after that it is removed, the back panel comes right off. What isn't shown in the video is removing the heatsink and fan. Before beginning, make sure the fan is unplugged and the NVMe SSD is uninstalled. After that, it is just removing a few screws and a piece of plastic. Overall, the process is pretty straightforward, and for the plastic, I would just be careful and take your time. When it came to repasting, the original thermal paste was dry, but what surprised me was the amount of dust. I dusted off the fan before the reinstallation, but there's also a slot on the back of the laptop where you can dust off the fan without any disassembly. Okay, so side tangent. I reinstalled the system with the new Arctic uh, MX6 reformulation and used their cleaning wipes. The wipes leave an odd residue and the paste is difficult to spread evenly compared to the older version. I might have just gotten a bad batch, but either way I should put out a warning. Anyways, side tangent over, and don't forget to check that the power switch plastic hasn't fallen out before reassembling the computer. Okay, so now to the Debian and GNU Linux stuff. The largest change I made was due to odd behavior with suspended Hibernate. They're a bit broken out of the box, so I ended up just getting a more recent kernel from Debian Backports, 6.12.22. It needs more of a recent version of IWL Wi-Fi, but rather than that, it is a drop-in replacement. And after adding a modified version of the ArcWiki script, which is a fix for touchpad delay after suspend, the system seems to work fine. The problem was pretty intermittent, so I left Hibernate disabled for testing. Another thing of note is that there are some reports of fan control not working on the Let's Note series, but the default fan curve on this laptop works pretty well, and it can be changed with Panasonic's unfortunately Windows-only utility. 
For the desktop, I went with my normal i3WM setup, but I ended up changing a few things to restore functionality to the function keys. Also, the script directory could be a bit cleaner. I added the function keys for brightness to the i3WM config using brightness CTL. For volume, I used a small wrapper script to have the media keys control all the audio outputs. And for some more of the specific functions, I bound FNF3, which I think was originally for switching to an external monitor, to a small script to activate the dock. And FN plus F8 disables the internal monitor using XRender. With that out of the way, let's move to the touchpad. The touchpad works out of the box, but not as intended. To get the scroll circle working, there's an ArcWiki entry, and it is just a Zorg configuration file. Next, my solution for the touchpad not having a middle mouse button was to use bindcode to attach the Japanese keys next to the spacebar to a copy and paste script. A simpler solution might just be using shift insert via XDO tool. Finally, I kept the default US keyboard layout, and with the exception of the Muhenkon key, everything appeared in Zev. Also, if anyone's wondering where I purchased the system, I got it through eBay, and it did unfortunately come with an extra crack. I'm just glad it doesn't have a BIOS password. Anyways, a uh, quick announcement here. I'm going to try to return to a close to weekly upload schedule, but I'm probably going to put my website back online first to host some ROMs and maybe some programs I've written. So expect uh, some videos on either my NCurses program, which I used in place of D menu, or a T480 Core Booter Libreboot video. So peace and have a good one.